Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be finding the inverse of a cubic function. Yes, you heard it right. We have f of x equals x cubed divided by 3 plus x squared plus x, and we're going to invert this function. In other words, we're going to set the f of x equal to y, and we're going to switch the roles of x and y. That's what the inverse function does. For example, if you have a function that is defined from set A to set B, and if f takes x and takes it to y, or in other words, maps in this direction, then f inverse takes y and maps it back to x. That's what f inverse does. Of course, if you have a function that's not one-to-one, -one, let's say you have like two different um, inputs that has the same output, then this is not going to happen because when you invert it, you're going to violate the rule for being a well-defined function. Make sense? So that's why we do need a bijection in order for a function to be invertible. So that's, that's the million-dollar question. Is f bijection? Is f a bijection? Or is f bijective, right? So I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, how this works. But generally, if you're given a cubic equation, now I made a video about another type of cubic equation because I think it was f of x equals x cubed minus 3x or something like that. These, these types of functions can also be inverted even though it's not going to have a single inverse. Because what happens is when you have the function, a cubic function, it usually goes like this, of course, it may not always have this. It may not always have three real solutions, but at least it's going to have at least one solution that is real. But the shape is generally like that. And what you can do with this is basically split it up into three pieces like this using the maxima and minima. And you can have function on different intervals. And of course, on those intervals, each piece of the function will be a bijection because as you can see, it'll pass the uh, vertical line test, or was it the horizontal line test? One of those. Anyways, I forgot, but it's one of those. You get the idea. Okay, so that's what I did earlier. So now this time we're going to be tackling a different function, which I like very much, and I've done similar problems before. If I can find the links, I'll share them uh, somewhere. But if someone, someone else knows them already, please do share. Uh, I think YouTube is okay with sharing links as long as they are my links, right? I don't know how that works, but sometimes, uh, you know, um, if you share a link, it'll be flagged as uh, whatever. So anyways, this is our function. We're gonna go ahead and invert it. And to be able to invert it, normally, generally, you would do something like this. Let's say I had a function g of x, and I had something like this, right? Of course, this function will probably have three inverses, but in order to be able to find them, you would set it equal to y, and then you would try to solve for x, because that's what it means. Once you solve for x, you basically get uh, g inverse of y, because g of x is y, and then uh, you replace this y with x, and that gives you g inverse of x, because we usually express functions in terms of x, but again, don't be confused because x and y switch roles, and then x becomes y, and y becomes x, something like that. So here's what we're gonna do. Same thing here, set it equal to y and solve for x. So that's our goal, that's the roadmap, solve for x. Now, to be able to solve for x, it's not always easy because first of all, you have a cubic equation with a constant that's a variable, if you know what that means. But uh, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and multiply both sides by three because I want a monic polynomial. What it means, is the coefficient, the leading coefficient is supposed to be one. It's better that way. Multiply by three, you get x cubed plus three x squared plus three x equals three y. Of course, multiplying both sides have consequences. You got three y, but that's perfectly fine. So the next thing you can do is use the cubic formula. Well, how does the cubic formula work? We have an identity that's written as follows, a plus b to the third power, minus 3ab multiplied by a plus b. As you know, this is equivalent to a cubed plus b cubed. Why? Because if you put this on the right-hand side, you'll get a plus b quantity cubed, which is given by the binomial theorem. But we want to use it this way because we're going to call a plus b x, and we're going to arrive at a cubic equation 
one of whose solutions we know, and that is actually a plus p, right? Because if x is a plus p, then this works. If this equation exists, then a plus b is going to satisfy it. Makes sense? I hope it does. It's only one of the solutions, though, but don't you need other solutions? Well, once you find a solution, you can always reduce the power and find a quadratic and go from there. But that's the main idea. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at this equation and this equation and then compare them. And what it does tell us is that the coefficient of x squared is, uh-oh, I messed up. Sorry, I skipped a step here. Never mind. We first need to depress this cubic equation. It's not depressed. We're going to give it some depression, okay? So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to go ahead and replace x with something so that we can get rid of a quadratic term. And that's done by doing the following. You set x equal to another variable, and I don't want to use y because y is already on the right-hand side. Let's use z, and that's not my complex z. By the way, I have another channel called a plus pi that focuses on complex numbers. Go ahead and check it out and let me know what you think. But I'm going to use z, a real z here. If I replace x with z and then minus, it's the opposite of this sign, and I'll take that coefficient and divide it by this power, and that's basically what you need to do. In other words, x should be replaced with z minus 1 so that we can get a depressed cubic. Depressed means there's not going to be a quadratic term at the end, whatever the variable is, because if you look at this equation, the variable doesn't have a quadratic term. We have x cubed and x, that's it. That's how the Italian guys, whoever claims it to be, uh, you know, tackled cubic equations many, many years ago. Okay, whoever you want to attribute it to, Cardano, Ferrari, Tartaglia, and who knows who else. <laughs> okay, great. So let's go ahead and take this equation and replace x with z minus 1. This is the general formula, by the way, but when we do this, you're going to be surprised. Okay, I have a surprise for you. Let's replace x with z minus 1. And then, so we're going to do it everywhere. Just have to do the work a little bit. Of course, uh, y is considered a constant, so it's going to stay the same. But if you expand, you're going to get z cubed minus 3z squared plus 3z minus 1 plus 3z squared minus 6z. Notice that 2z will be multiplied. 2z or not 2z, that's the problem. And then we have plus 3z minus 3 equals 3y. Now, I hope that z squared cancels out. That's my goal. But, uh-oh, 6z also cancels out. And I end up with something pretty interesting. And what is that? It is basically z cubed minus 4 equals 3y. Wow, that's pretty interesting, don't you think? Well, we were trying to solve for x, but first we need to solve for z. And it's super duper easy, right? Okay. It's easy because what you have to do is cube root both sides and then you're done. Wow, that was quick, right? You'll see why that's the case, but from here we can safely say that, okay, z can be written as cube root of 3y plus 4. What's the relationship between x and z? Well, x is equal to z minus 1, so we're going to replace z with x plus 1. x plus 1 equals the cube root of 3y plus 4, which means x is equal to the cube root of 3y plus 4 minus 1. And that does the trick. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Let me go ahead and show you the other approach, and then I will talk about the inverse. But for, we're not so close to finding the inverse. And of course, there's almost always a second method. Some people like, are like, why don't you do this problem in 30 seconds? Then it wouldn't be on YouTube. But instead, I want to show you alternative solutions method by taking my time and going over the techniques. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. But I don't know if you noticed, but when we set it equal to y and multiply everything by 3, you should definitely have an eye for these kinds of things, and it can be developed over time. But here's the thing. When you look at this thing carefully, you should realize, uh-oh, the left-hand side is almost a perfect cube. Isn't that nice? Yes. So what you need, and uh, did I mess up anything? Let me check. Uh, x cubed plus... No, I think it's correct. I was looking at my uh, other solution, and I don't know where the... Four comes? 
Um, but anyways, we'll, we'll figure it out. Maybe I made a mistake. But here's the idea. If you add 1 to both sides, you're going to have x plus 1 to the third power. And that's equal to 3y plus 1, isn't it? Yay. So from here, it's actually very easy to solve for x, just like before. We're going to go ahead and cube root both sides, right? And then all you have to do is subtract 1 from both sides. And as I said earlier, this is equivalent to f of uh, f inverse of y, because if f of x is y, then f inverse of y is x. So in order to change this into f inverse of x, you totally forget about this x, and just replace y with x on both sides, you get f inverse of x is the cube root of 3x plus 1. Don't forget to change y to x's. And that should be f inverse. Now, why did I get a different answer with the other method? Let's go ahead and check our work real quick. So what we did was basically multiply everything by 3, and that gave us the following. x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x equals 3y. And then I replace x with y minus 1, didn't I? I think so. So when I did that, x with z minus 1, actually, not y. When I replace x with z minus 1, I got x cubed. Let me check real quick. z minus 1 to the third plus 3 times z minus 1 squared. You know what? I think I messed up somewhere here. Oh, okay. I see. I think I see my mistake. It is this one. 3z squared minus 6z plus 3. I forgot the additional plus 3 here. Yep. Because I need to expand this and then multiply by 3, which is the extra 3 that I forgot. So they're going to cancel out. You're not going to have a 3. This is supposed to be 1. This is supposed to be 1. And yes, we'll arrive at the same answer. Of course, the second version tells us the truth, but that is basically why I messed up. I was able to correct it in time, hopefully. Hopefully this wasn't a too long video, but who cares, right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.